Today we're going to be discussing one of the more popular isopods in the hobby and you'll see why very shortly. And that is of course the Armadillidium maculatum, the zebra isopod. Hello and welcome back to Bug Rounds. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly, so if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So as I said, we're going to be talking about the zebra isopod today, and we're going to jump straight into the positives because of the common name there. So biggest positive, really cool appearance, black and white zebra patterning. These guys are absolutely fascinating to look at, and this isn't the only colours they come in. I also own uh, Amaculatum chocolate, so it's kind of a more brownish colour with the white stripes. You can also get some with yellow stripes on a black body. Now, I'm sure there's plenty of other morphs also out there, but I only actually own the standard zebra and the chocolates. Now, although I actually prefer the standard black and white, the chocolates have been fun to raise too, but I think we'll probably spend most of this video just talking about my black and white ones. Now, another thing that's really interesting about the markings on these is they don't always come out perfect. You can have a maculatum with very broken white stripes going across their body as well. So it's not quite uniform striping. And to me, that's just something extra special. Some people prefer just having a line bred of perfect white stripes and like to discard those that have the broken side or at least separate them from their colonies. I'm happy actually keeping mine together. I did used to keep um, ones with broken stripes separately because of my OCD, but I decided to just put them back together because you never know what's gonna come out from their babies. They're exactly the same species. There's no problem with keeping them together. It's just that I'm not gonna constantly be producing uniform white, then black, then white, then black. There's gonna be gaps within the stripes. And to me, that is a positive. It's a positive because you, you're not just having all the animals looking identical. You're gonna have some with slight different patterning. And that's one of the most amazing things about isopods is how their offspring can turn out slightly differently. You know, you'll have to excuse me, keep rubbing my uh, hands here. They're still very, very itchy from when I was packing up my spiders for the BTS. So you're gonna have a lot of me kind of like rubbing my hands or scratching my hands through this video. I do apologize. Next video, I'll try and sit on my hands or something. I don't know. So what's another positive about the Amaculatum? Well, they're easy to come by and they're reasonably cheap as well. So you can get them off of your known traders around at a reasonable price. Or if you find other hobbyists, you can normally get them to knock down the price because of another positive, which is how well they actually breed. So this is an isopod that I bred quite happily for a while now. I haven't really had many issues come from these guys and feeding them seemed quite easy too. They were less keen on like protein sources that like my Lavis would have, but they were pretty high up on the veggies. So things like sweet potato or courgette, or if you're in America, zucchini, however you wanna say it, same thing, right? But they, they like a lot of variant in their diet, especially in vegetable matter. So anytime you're cooking up a, a nice meal and you've got your scraps, the Amaculatum are gonna finish those scraps off for you. Just bear in mind not to put in too much depending on your colony size. And of course, being an armadillidium, they can conglobate, so they can roll into a ball, which again is really, really fun, especially if you have small children. If you pick them up, they feel disturbed, they roll into that ball. I try not to disturb mine too much, but for educational reasons, for the fun of the kids and stuff, it's, it's really, really awesome to see, especially when they uncurl from the balls. Uncurling from the balls is one of my favorite things to watch. Just all the legs start coming out and then they have to flip back on their front. And I just think it's absolutely amazing. So we've had quite a lot of positives. We've got easy breeders. We've got fairly cheap isopods. We've got lovely patternings and we've got variation and we've got morphs. What more can you ask for from an isopod? So let's move on to the negatives then. 
Again, I've used this negative with other isopods and it's only a negative to certain keepers, not to all. And that is linked to the positive of easy breeding. Obviously you can end up with a huge culture and that means getting a bigger enclosure every time or bigger tub that you keep them in. You keep having to expand or you'll have to split colonies. And because they're quite common and readily available, although they're one of the favorites in the hobby, you may not always be able to pass on or sell them too easily because there's a lot of competition out there also selling them, meaning that you really just have to constantly maintain this colony. And if you wanted a smaller colony, they may not be the isopod type for you. So if you plan on getting these guys, um, but you don't want huge colonies, it's best to maybe speak to local pet shops or friends or family about other people that may take some on for you because your colony is going to grow providing you keep them well. But of course, if you can't find that and you want this isopod, then you're gonna have the problems arise of constantly um, growing the enclosure, which can get quite pricey and obviously is taking up your space. Now I can't really think of any other negatives and the problem with doing these videos with isopods is often I don't really find many negatives and most negatives are either gonna be based on easy breeding or hard breeding. So when it comes to the isopod videos about these, that's probably gonna be a common occurrence, but I wanted to keep that, that part in the negatives in just in case something else sparked up. And of course, I like to share my personal experiences with every animal. So a negative with a tarantula that I might keep will be totally different to a negative with an isopod. So it's still worth checking out all these videos. And remember guys, there are a bunch of these out now they don't have a huge amount of views, so if you could help me out by watching through them, that would be fantastic. So now we're just gonna move on to alternative information. Now, in alternative information, I normally talk about whether I was gonna be continuing to keep these animals. Sometimes I'm getting questions coming up, like why are you getting loads of animals you don't plan on keeping? There are reasons, go back through my videos, because otherwise I've got to keep on repeating myself as to the reasons why. I have a very good reason why I am downsizing. I have a very good reason why I bought so many, especially in isopods to begin with. So if you want those questions answered, please go back and watch other isopod videos because it's a little bit infuriating repeating myself again and again. And for those of you that watch me religiously, you're just gonna to have to keep listening to me repeating myself again and again. And you are the guys that are keeping this channel going. So you know, just make sure to go back and look at those videos. But I didn't actually answer the question, and the question is I'm not actually continuing to keep any of my Amaculatum, the chocolate, or the standard black and white. And that is because these guys have been fantastic to keep, but I am making my space, and they just didn't cut the list for the type of isopods that I plan on continuing to keep. Now I do admit, I do admit that they were a little bit of a difficult one to let go of. My colony was doing quite well. They always entertain me on maintenance day and feeding days where they're, some of them are freaking out and congregating into a ball, whereas other ones are just happily running around or running up my hand when I'm sorting out through um, the bits of old food in the enclosures and things. So they have been one of the more difficult ones to let go of and they have actually already gone now because BTS has passed and I did actually manage to get rid of all of my maculatums. So if you did purchase any of those, thank you very, very much. And I now have some more space for some more challenging isopods. So I'm gonna end this video here. As I said, I'm gonna try and just maybe sit on my hands in the next ones because I've got to do a bunch of these videos on the same day. The, uh, the pain, the pain, the itchiness. That's what happens when you mess with new worlds, new world tarantulas. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned to more My Pet videos among normal other videos too. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.